Hi. I have a friend who recently bought a house and I wanted to find something silly like a pair of old shoes or something like that in a second hand store. And while being there I saw this putter and since both me and my girlfriend plays golf I decided that this putter would make a great gift for her since it's a short putter and she is kinda short. As you see here this putter needs some restoring. The graphite on the back is completely worn out. It's cracked and it definitely needs to be replaced. So my first thought was to make a mahogany backside including the weight from the graphite that was there before I put it inside the mahogany and then make a template out of tape so I could see both holes for the screws and the indentation of where the weight goes behind the face of the putter and also the general shape of the putter. But what I didn't know at this time was that I actually didn't even end up using this indentation as I thought I would. Well, this is how I made the quick template out of tape, but let's skip this since it won't be used anyway. I still need to put some weight inside the wood, so we will get closer to the 300 to 350 grams that a golf putter usually weighs. Therefore, I decided that if I cut the wood into two pieces, I could put the weight inside of it and close it up again. I also wanted to add some steel to add something to the big bulky piece of wood that would otherwise just sit there behind the putter face. And the quickest way of getting there is to use the weights that were already there before, then remove some of it, add some wood, and then it's about the same weight uh, before and after the modification. And she is no golf nerd, so she will probably never notice the slight change of weight between her current putter and this putter. Hopefully. Now it's time to hollow out the center of the wood to make room for the weight. I adjusted the weights, cut some of it off so there were more room and they would fit into this square hole that I would start making. I didn't want to get too close to the edge in fear of splitting the wood when drilling or chiseling. And then it was time to hollow out. And to do that I used a Forstner bit. And to be completely honest with you, I cannot remember the size of it. Quick question. Do you like it when I take a break from talking and let the video and the music do its own magic? Or do you prefer when I just talk and do the voiceover like this? After removing the majority of the wood with the Forstner bit, I turned to the chisels and I used different sizes depending on what I felt the easiest, so no recipe for perfection here. And after a while of chiseling, I finally had enough room for the weights. And then I mixed up some epoxy to keep the weight, the metal plate and the bottom part piece of the wood in place. I let the epoxy harden over a couple of days and then I started sanding and shaping out the general shape of the putter on the belt sander. I forgot to turn on the dust collection. I was still wearing a mask but there's nothing wrong with keeping the dust down. And there was this part of the metal plate sticking out one of the sides. It was too much on the sander, so I decided to use an angle grinder. Because that would be the easiest way of removing excess metal. So yeah, I did that. But 
what I didn't do was to think about what happens when metal gets hot while being adhered with epoxy. Well, it's separated. At least I could fix it together in a better way. So I decided that drilling some holes in the metal plate and then some recess holes in the back or the bottom wood piece would keep it together in a better way and more strongly, hopefully. I don't know about you, but when I'm in the shop, actually, I don't need to be in the shop for this, but when I'm in the shop, I sometimes get distracted by either my girlfriend, another project or just something that's bothering me and then I decide that fixing this would be a good idea. This time, I got distracted by another putter that I'm currently working on. Anyway, I left the camera running for almost an hour and I only realized that it was still running when I was on my way back inside. And speaking about forgetting, I also forgot to record when I actually made the epoxy the second time. But it was kind of the same deal like the first time I did it, so... A couple of days later, it hardened and I decided to go work on the project again. And now I needed to remove the excess wood on the sander and I used a marking knife to mark out exactly what I needed to remove and then I turned around and I found one of the cats has snuck in. Doesn't happen a lot but happens sometimes. Sometimes my girlfriend even locked them inside the ship. But we're not talking about that on these edges anymore. The police are looking out for her so be quiet about it. This one is made from scratch but I don't have any recordings of this because Back when I started making this one, I didn't even record anything that I was doing in the in the workshop. The only time you see this part is when it appears on this video. So, after the cat decided, validated, and took a look at what was going on and approved the quality of the work, she ran out again, and I could start working again. So, back to the putter and the real putter. The putter and the project started to look good at this point. And now I needed to make these subtle shapes to make it look even greater. So off to the sander and make some rough shaping and then back to add some more details. Talking about details, did you notice I changed the screws? And one of the details that I wanted was a line down the middle that could kind of act like an aiming guide like most potters have. So. I wanted to make this one and I made this one out of a nail that I bent into shape several times. And then I made a recess into the wood where the nail could lie flat in. I had to do a lot of fine, small adjustments for this nail to fit in. After many trial and errors regarding the nail and the recess, I finally reached the point of satisfaction. Now I just had to remove what was in spare. And that means you are going to watch a lot of sanding and filing the next couple of seconds. So that was a lot of sanding and filing and sanding and sanding and filing and sanding and sanding and sanding and filing and sanding and so on, a lot of it. I finally, after many days of hard work, reached the ultimate point of satisfaction. The moment of treating the wood with some oil. I gave this one some clear outdoor furniture oil and I tested two different oils and this one was the best one because just darker, richer, better, pretty.
and now there were only one thing to do, waiting for the oil to dry and then assemble the butter. Finally, at last, and look at this, I mean look at it, dry screws, nice. couldn't help it so I took some pictures and I showed the butter to one of the cats but she didn't really seem to care about it so I guess at this point the only thing I had to do was say thank you for watching see you next time bye